to welcome everybody and good morning and thank you for joining us. My name is Dwayne Henderson and I'm a member of Korea Lighting's training and education team and host of our e-learning series. For those watching live, happy Monday. Uh, about the session, there'll be 15 minutes in duration. Um, at the end of the presentation, the presenters will make themselves available for Q&A. Uh, although the participants are muted, we do encourage you to use the chat and Q&A box to ask questions. Feel free to type those during the presentation. As you know, Monday is design-related content, and today's session will focus on office spaces. Uh, to lead us to this session, I'd like to welcome back Jim Blair from our Applications Department, and he's joined today by Ashley Conley from our Product Marketing Team. Good morning, Jim and Ashley. Good morning, Wayne. Good morning. Hey, before we get started, could you guys real quickly, quickly just talk about your roles in the business? First you, Jim, and then you, Ashley. Certainly. Thanks, Dwayne. I lead the Application Engineering Department, uh, co-managed with Frank Tempesta, and I've been with the AE Group for about 12 years. Perfect. And Ashley? Hi, my name is Ashley Conley. I am the Product Manager for Indoor Linear Products, um, and I've been with Cree Lighting for a, almost two years. Perfect. All right, great. So, Jim, you're going to get us started. Let's go. Absolutely. Thanks, Dwayne. Today, we're going to take our design work back indoors uh, with the RP1-12. This is the recommended practices for office spaces. As I have with the past uh, few weeks, let me define the recommended practices for you. It's basically a consensus formed lighting recommendation from a knowledgeable and diverse group of lighting stakeholders that help guide the lighting design and product selection process. It's really our guide to making good, solid lighting design choices. So not sure how many movie buffs are out there, but we simply can't do Jim, it. real quick. Yep. Hey, Jim, I'm not seeing your slides advance. I don't know, Ashley, if you're, oh, there we go. Okay. Yep. Um, I can, you know, it, it's, it's uh, we couldn't do a, a RP office space PowerPoint without referencing this guy. Um, yeah, I'm gonna need you to work this weekend and help me light up my office space. Yeah, if you could do that, that'd be great. So we all remember uh, Bill Lumberg from Office Space, uh, the movie. Um, not sure I'm ready for my uh, a star in the Walk of Fame yet, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll stick to the lighting today. Uh, there's a ton of application opportunities indoors. We could spend a lot of time on today, but really we're gonna focus on shared individual offices and common areas. The goal of the recommended practices in office spaces is really about serving people. We take a closer look at the lighting needs in these spaces. We find that we need to understand the desires of our customer in a more detailed way. If you could build a Venn diagram of these uh, values here, you would get an idea of the products that um, you know, that would require <clears throat> the, the actual office uh, requirements for the products that we have. So Ashley is gonna talk in a little bit about some classes of these spaces and dependent on these three key ingredients, which are human needs, economics, and the architectural function. These are all necessary components, um, but the mixture of these can be different. So think of these three topics as a supporting structure of the finished space. So once we have these three key ingredients set, we can start looking in the variables of the space itself. One of these is the colors of the walls, textures as well, which we'll see in a minute. These offer different properties of reflectance. Some are bright white and highly reflective while others uh, kind of are darker and can absorb a great deal of illumination. It doesn't matter how many lights we put in this type of space, we're, we're really not gonna get the light values that, that are higher. It soaks everything up. The recommended practices does give us a standard. It's 80, 50, 20 for the most typical office, which you can see on the right-hand image. We use 75, 50, 20, <clears throat> excuse me, as our standard. This is offering us a little bit more conservative approach because we know that that space is going to have different colors in it. It's going to have uh, a you know somewhat less reflective ceiling over time. So we want to design into the future, not just for day one. 
The activity in the space uh, suggests that we take a calculation plane at 30 inches or two and a half feet above finished floor. So this is where our plane of calculation ends up in our design work. Unless we're asked to do something differently. And that's illuminance from at that plane. If you've been a part of previous sessions, you're familiar with a couple of these terms. However, we have a new one for you today that's worth knowing as well. Let's review them real quick. And we'll see these in the two images um, in the uh, PowerPoint here. Illuminance. This is the measure of foot candles or lux with a meter direct from the source. Luminance, which we talked about last week, the value of light being emitted by a surface. This has two subcomponents in the reflectance and the observation point. And our new term this week is luminous excitance. That's the ability of a surface to emit light, expressed as the luminous flux per unit area as at a specified point on a surface. This is used to tell how much light can be reflected from a surface and uses when we're using an indirect source. So looking at the, the right, the direct indirect source here doesn't have quite the reflectance value to work with. You can see it's a kind of a grayish silver uh, ceiling paint. Um, and then I mentioned texture uh, also with reflectivity. On the right hand side, you'll see some bookshelves uh, that currently have some gray notebooks in it. Um, and it's important to remember the 50% really covers uh, all sorts of, of different types of things. It's not just paint color. It can also be textures and, and possibly built in bookshelves like you're seeing here. And your mileage may vary. So don't be afraid to adjust that value if you know better. There's many different types of spaces, such as open offices where a team of folks may gather together to solve challenges, or a, a simple cube farm where groups of individuals will take care of customers um, on an individual level. We're all different when it comes to lighting needs. Some folks need more than others. This is why task lighting becomes necessary. So typical standard of RP recommended values in an office space are 25 to 30 foot candles average and usually that's plenty of light for general illumination but there's reading and writing tasks that can offer or have a need for 50 foot candles or more and and that is dependent on age and uh, distance away type set size etc note the parabolic troughers <clears throat> in the office image to the lower left these were used to prevent glare on crt screens but the advancements of light rejecting and glare reducing screens, this really no longer is a prevalent issue. You might be tempted to offer LED tubes here uh, as a swap for the T8 uh, and T5 replacements. But remember when you do so in a parabolic or paracube reflector, that really compromises the light output. We don't really wanna be doing that. It, it's just not as efficient. The amount of light getting to the task is, is not good. So what about uh, individual offices? Our approach is a little bit different when it comes to uh, the individual's needs. So individual offices need to allow for flexibility and controls uh, to meet the lighting needs of the individual when the doors are closed. A couple of the ways that you might do this is, is dimming, task tuning, auto off, and uh, also color tuning. This promotes flexibility in, in function um, it also introduces the wellness factor uh, for the occupant. Our final look will be in the common areas. These are used by everyone at different times. Based on the class that Ashley will define, there can be different treatments applied here. They could be generally illuminated with standard product or have an artistic flair. They might all be full or partially occupied as well. So controls to auto shut off will be key. We wanna save the most energy that we can in these spaces and, and that's one way to do it. As the, the spaces break down to common reception, conference rooms, cafeteria or lunch areas. So common reception areas, those should be inviting. Uh, hallways or passageways approaching need to uh, illuminate a clear path. <clears throat> 
conference rooms need to offer good uh, general office illumination for reading, which is 40 to 50 foot candles average and offer controls in the space that allow for shutting down fixtures strategically um, when we're presenting on a vertical surface. So maybe the bank of fixtures closest to that vertical surface would be keyed to turn off. We also need enough light for note taking um, while these presentations are going on. So you don't want it completely dark in the room. Cafeteria or lunch areas should offer a good average with a higher CRI. This is so colors in food are represented uh, well. Verticals in the space are key also. That way uh, folks can communicate and, and uh, be comfortable uh, in that space. There's also another component to all of these spaces that we need to consider, and that is lighting really for the service uh, end of things, cleaning and maintenance in those spaces. So it's okay to light a little bit higher level. I mean, certainly 50 foot candles is enough to clean in uh, for the conference room area. So you've already got that. But you may need to over design a little bit in some areas and then be able to dial back those values of light so that um, so that folks can properly clean these spaces and, and do maintenance um, well. So with that, uh, thank you. I would like to hand the presentation over to Ashley. Thank you, Jim. Um, again, my name is Ashley Conley and um, I'm the product manager for Indoor Linear Lighting. And I'm just gonna spend some time talking about some products, uh, Cree lighting products um, for office spaces and how um, they can fit into um, the different office classes. Next slide, please. So I wanna start by defining the different um, office spaces. So there's three classes, there's class A, class B, and class C. But today I'm gonna to spend a lot of my time talking about class A and B. So those, will, those will be the ones that you tend to run into for most office remodels or new constructions. So starting with class A, these offices are the elite offices. They are the top of the line. When you wanna benchmark a class A type of office, think about um, Google um, or Apple. Um, these are some companies that you can benchmark as um, a company that was interested in renovating their office space into a class A. And, and what really makes a class A space? Um, it's a multitude of things starting with, you know, one, instead of seeing an office space from a utilitarian perspective of just serving a purpose to um, make it easy for their employees to do the, the tasks at hand, they take another step um, into ergonomics as well as um, psychosomatic, you know, blend into um, their work day and their work habits. So the first thing I've noticed is a lot of these class A offices provide open concepts um, and, and the open concepts, in addition to modern design, um, we're seeing a lot of um, office space transform into spaces where it kind of forces collaboration uh, between individuals. So um, in class B offices, like in the picture you see to the right, you know, there's taller um, heights to walls for cubicles, where with class A, you're gonna see lower profile desks so that it's easy to communicate to a cross-functional member uh, nearby. Um, you're also going to see a mixture of uh, different high quality finishes, um, especially with the trend of mixed media becoming more precedent um, in modern interior design. Um, and this is kind of where, where Jim spoke before about how a luminous, luminous exitus becomes important as you're mixing medias on work surfaces. That is going to be very important as to how light is emitted on a surface where there's more than one media being used. In addition, um, there's, you know, multitude of amenity, amenities. You'll see coffee bars, um, cafeterias with uh, private chefs, um, you know, outside of eating places, workout facilities. In Class A, you're going to see kind of the top of the line amenities um, to make the work environment very comfortable so that um, employees can pr produce at a high level. Um, and that kind of also touches on, you know, the HVACs and lighting fixtures and technological systems. And in general, office space, class A offices typically have a larger budget to work with. Talking to class B, budgets are a little bit more restrictive. Um, these would be defined as more of your traditional office spaces. 
Um, it could be a new construction. In a lot of cases, it's a, a, a building purchased um, and renovated. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, you're gonna see the traditional cube farms, um, a lot of workspaces that are just standardized so that um, you can complete your tasks um, from a utilitarian perspective of work. Um, and it lacks a little bit less uh, design sophistication as you would see in class A. And then as for class C, um, even more budget restricted, restricted, you're going to see um, similar traditional um, office spaces and just like the minimal amount of, amen of amenities where um, there is a cafeteria, but there may not be um, a coffee bar and those other things that we spoke about. So um, those are the main um, class types. And I'm gonna spend some time talking about some products um, that go well with class A. Next slide, please. Um, so the Stylus Linear Series um, is one that I, I would say fits great for Class A. Um, it has a lot of variation in size, as well as with its new corners, uh, provides uh, a lot more um, geometric uh, fun to lighting design. And then to kind of finish off a package, we have our Flex Series um, integrated with SmartCast technology. Um, this is unique because it comes available with five interoptic choices. Um, to, pro to provide more architectural flair um, with very little cost adder. And then, of course, um, you can always round off a package with um, downlights. Next slide, please. So to delve a little bit more into the Stylus Linear Series, it's Free Lighting's first specification linear series. Um, as I mentioned, uh, there's a lot of versatility and being able to order um, two up to 12 foot sections of continu continuous linear rows. Um, it's also in available with um, a lot of control options. Um, zero to 10 volt dimming down to 1%. Um, SmartCast and Lutron um, controls are able with Lutron Vive and Lutron ecosystem. And then we are offering um, suspended direct and indirect uh, configurations to um, provide some nice light on the ceiling um, to provide that, that soft reflections to kind of avoid that cave effect. Next slide, please. So just to talk a little bit more about the features of the Stylus Linear Series, um, as I mentioned, there are a lot of control options. Um, there's four major mounting types. There's surface, recess, suspended, and wall. And what's unique about our suspended direct indirect and wall direct indirect, the suspended direct indirect comes complementary with a bat wing optic um, that provides uh, optimal spacing in between fixtures, as well as the wall uh, mount comes uh, complementary with an asymmetric uplight. Um, we also have recently provided an asymmetric downlight for all of our um, uh, mounting configurations, um, except for uh, the wall mount down. Um, in addition to that, um, as I mentioned, you know, it's it's available with a multitude of controls, um, 0 to 10 volt down to 1% dibbing, um, and a 10-year limited warranty. Next slide, please. And as I mentioned before, um, there we we also recommend the Flex Series Troffer um, for Class A spaces. Um, this is uh, unique, as I mentioned before, it has the five different inner optics um, to, to provide a more architectural flair um, into the space. And it is available in a multitude of um, lumen packages uh, to accommodate different ceiling heights um, in the spaces where there are taller ceilings and you need to um, round off uh, an office package with um, a troffer with a different ceiling height. Um, this is also available with its 10 year warranty and is also uh, manufactured and assembled in Racine, Wisconsin at our facility. Next slide, please. Again, I cannot express the value that controls add to the class A office. Um, it, it comes available with task tuning, uh, dimming, uh, more specifically with uh, the Stylus Linear Series, um, launch with SmartCast, you will now have the ability to do um, environmental sensing where you can uh, see the um, sense, get um, readings on pressure as well as humidity all over um, API and BACnet. 
Next slide, please. And for class B's, just to talk a little bit about class B spaces, um, I believe that our ZR and our ZRRK series is the best uh, solution um, for those offices. Or, next slide, please. So the ZR Troffer and the ZRRK series. So ZR Troffer is your standard Troffer when you are retrofit or when you are um, replacing um, traditional light sources or a previous LED light source. Um, it's a, and our ZRRK is our new retrofit, um, which is great for class B or even the class C um, office space. Um, it's, you know, used for um, plenums that have pre existing housings that you can just retrofit right in. But both series are great because they provide um, low glare basket, um, a low glare option for these uh, basket troffers. Um, and there's a multitude of lumen packages as well prevailing various ceiling heights to accommodate um, different foot candle requirements and also available with a multitude of controls between SmartCast and Lutron. Next slide, please. This is a little bit more of a cost effective uh, lighting solution. Um, it has a five year warranty. Um, and for both the ZRC and the ZRK, um, we've made a lot of additions to these uh, portfolio um, la launching in May. So in a few uh, weeks, um, we will have the uh, ZRC available with these different lumen packages and control options. And in June, the ZRK series will be available um, as a retrofit solution with um, the different lumen packages. Next slide, please. Okay, thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Jim. That brings us to our Q&A portion. Sorry, we ran a little bit long uh, this morning. We do have a, a question regarding the Cadient fixture, uh, asking if that would be a perfect solution for a Class A office space. Do you a quick minute, Ashley? Yes, um, that is definitely a, um, a solution for Class A offices um, because of its, uh, you know, different, um, you know, seeing controlling and dynamic uh, lighting options. Um, typically, you know, um, a lot of um, class A spaces um, typically are going to have lead certification. So having a fixture like that uh, will complement it greatly. And just to, to piggyback on that, we do have a future session coming up on health care. So we're trying to be selective in what products we put in what sessions. We can't put them all in, in each session based on the amount of time we have. So we'll, we will be talking more about Cadient healthcare segment that will be coming up here soon. Um, Ashley, I don't know if you know this one or not, but there's a question about is the flex going to see some increased outputs? I know that's a little outside the wheelhouse of where you focus in terms of your product. Any, any uh, insight on that to offer? I'm sorry, you up a little bit. You said, um, what was the question about outputs again? So the, yeah, so the ZR, we, we're seeing increased outputs within the ZR platform. The, the question is regarding the Flex platform. If you if you know if there's an increased output coming to that family as well. I know it's a little outside of your, your product scope, but do you have any insight on that? Um, not in the immediate future, but it's definitely something that um, has been looked into in to uh, future roadmap uh, placements. Perfect, thank you. And, and Jim, our stylus linear and, and really any linear solution adds some compl complexity complexity in terms of the design. What information do you and your team need to, to help with those types of designs? Well, for sure, it, it does add some complexity um, in, in your class A spaces, uh, sometimes your class B. We need to know where the product is. Um, we also need to kind of um, need to know the, the customer's desires in the space. Um, reflectances are crucial in this case um, in order to uh, to make our uh, assessment of the space most accurate. So suspending the fixtures, um, an idea of the type of output that you need will certainly make the best recommendation based on, you know, indirect, direct, or direct only, those types of situations. And then what else is in the space? You know, are we, are we aligning to aisles or file cabinets and that sort of thing? Um, each of those components is going to is going to come together and make a, a total space. So we need a little bit more info. Perfect. 
All right, there's a question uh, about are the products mentioned made in, in the USA? So the stylus and uh, flex droppers would be at present, the, the ZR uh, is not. Um, actually, somebody's asking if the stylus uh, recessed or surface is coming with a, a wall wash feature. You may have touched on that. Yes, um, so the surface and the uh, recess and suspended are available with a wall wash optic today as a downlight option. And then a follow another question kind of around uh, stylus would be that the direct and direct fixture is great, but they're asking if it comes with the ability to make a hexagon or odd shapes versus just squares and rectangles. At this time, the corners that we have available are only 90 degree corners. So you're only able to do um, squares or uh, rectangles or um, if someone has like a unique like stair step design, something that is going to um, allow for a 90 degree um, turn from fixture to fixture. That's what we're able to accommodate today, but not um, octagons or anything uh, greater or less than a 90 degree uh, change. Perfect. Thank you. Hey, Jim, you want to advance the slide then? Well, it looks like that's all the questions and we'll close up shop. All right. So thank you uh, both to Jim and to Ashley for your time and your presentations this morning. Um, just to give the audience a, a look at what's coming um, this week as well as the next design session. So on Wednesday, Eric Algard will join us and we'll finish up um, part two of the TM30 discussion. If you haven't seen part one, that's available on our YouTube channel. Um, on Friday, we've talked a little bit on the fringes about API, so application program interfaces. So we'll go under the hood of where an API is in our control session on Friday. And then next Monday, um, Jim will return with another product manager as we tackle parking lots around recommended practices. So I want to thank the audience also for joining us. If you have any feedback to share, please feel free to reach out to me. You can also reach out to the presenters uh, directly. Again, all content is recorded and placed on our YouTube channel. Please subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Again, thanks everybody for watching and enjoy your week.